Hi, everybody. Um, don't stand so far away. It's terrifying. Um, my name is Mark, um, Mark Verbos from Verbos Electronics. Um, earlier today, we saw a beginner's workshop from, from Tom who um, tried to, to show how, how this system being interface oriented and kind of macro module driven, it can be quite immediate. So uh, have the possibility to go from idea to results quite easily and quickly. And um, we, both of us actually use it to, to do improvised live sets where we uh, feel free in the moment to patch things up and introduce them in front of an audience and and have a pretty good idea of what will happen without without auditioning before but to go completely against that idea um, what I'm going to show is a, a couple of more involved advanced ideas that can be done with these building blocks that uh, wouldn't necessarily be intuitive so what I've prepared is a cheat sheet down here with um, four general ideas and as part of what the, the way I want to show it I'm going to first on the the, the um, teachers dry erase board show uh, a block diagram of what it is that I'm going to patch in order to create a result and then I'm going to demonstrate it and um, at the end after I've shown these four ideas then I'll try to use those ideas into something musical and see what happens so <clears throat> to start out with um, the, the, the first module that I want to focus on uh, in concept is the multi envelope and in case you don't know anything about this already let me explain the the basics of it and then um, we'll be able to launch from that pad so inside of this module is something similar to the core that's in the voltage multi-stage but dedicated to to doing envelopes and so when when a gate or a trigger initiates the envelope it steps through four stages and and one sustain stage and simultaneously makes a whole bunch of different envelope shapes out of those times and levels so I will go directly to the the graphic so everything is going between uh, ground or zero volts and, and 10 volts and we have these zones uh, let's kind of make this one like this so um, in the top section we have um, the top one is delay attack decay sustain release so that one is going to look like uh, a, a line down at ground for the first stage, a rise up to 10 volts for the, the next stage, a decay down to whatever the sustain level is set to anywhere in between during the next stage, and a fall during the last stage. And, and then at the top there's a, an end pulse which is going to send out a, a, a quick couple of millisecond spike at at the end of the whole thing but at the same time out of the uh, the attack hold the case sustain release output it's going like this um, immediately rising up to reach the the 10 volts peak and holding it that for the length of the the second slider setting and then decaying off to do the same and then delay attack hold release is is doing this shape which it's unaffected by the sustain it it holds always at the the peak 10 volts and then finally attack decay attack sustain which is rising here falling here rising to whatever level the sustain is and then falling again effectively creating an attack decay with an echoed uh, attack release but that's fine but what about other stage other shapes that don't exist in this module and that's what I want to show you how to do so 
if I use, in this case, a, a control voltage processor, which is a, a new module of ours, I can take the, a, the delay, attack, decay, sustain, release, and the attack, hold, decay, sustain, release, and crossfade between them. And the crossfade control will effectively allow me to create a break point in an attack that could be up or down. So it becomes a attack, attack two, decay, sustain, release. So the way that I will do that is, that's not long enough, is to take the delay, attack, decay, sustain, release into one side of the crossfader. We'll put it there. The attack hold, decay, sustain, sustain release here. And just so that we can actually hear the nature of this, we're not going to control the level with this. We're going to control the pitch of an oscillator so we can really hear the shape. Okay, so this is now This is now the delay attack to case, the case sustain release and this is the attack hold decay sustain release and make it more extreme Another example of this would be, uh, where's my, Tim, how do I, uh, this, yeah. Another example of this would be to create something a little bit like the, the um, attack decay, attack sustain release, which is something like this, but this, always goes down to ground at this point. So using this technique, we can actually create something like this, where we actually have control of where this break point is. So it can be down and then back up again. Or if we move this break point up, then we turn it into a, an out, a, a convex break point. So the way that we would do that would be to crossfade between the attack hold sustain release and the attack decay attack sustain release so that during the the second stage we're actually crossfading between going from here to here and going from here to here so we effectively set that in the break point here which what that would sound like in context and then if that was Controlling the, the the level of this point from the the crossfading control. An interesting side note 
um, is that what's happening by doing this with the crossfading is effectively the same thing that's happening internally in the the multi envelope so the the shape control which goes from linear ramps up to rc curves so a lot of times on on uh envelope generators you'll see controls that are labeled linear to log or exponential to log or whatever and if those are envelopes that are based on just simple rise fall envelopes and then there's a general cv input the way that they create these curves is that they use feedback from the output so if you were to feedback the output of something like this back in and make it so that the increase voltage going into the times makes the the times longer you'd actually make the shape turn into something more like this um, and if you did it where the higher voltage makes the times faster you would you would turn it into something that looks like this but neither of these is actually what uh, what a classic sort of East Coast envelope generator looks like because the the envelope generators that came from from most synthesizer manufacturers from Moog or Roland or ARP or whatever all of those use what they call RC curves, which is um, is electronics talk. It means resistor capacitor, but it's essentially always starts moving quickly and ends moving slowly. So the attacks are convex and the, the Ks are concave. And in the multi-envelope, the shape control does that because internally it's cross-fading. Each step is cross-fading from something to something else. And that control is actually affecting the, the ramp oscillator that's acting to control the crossfader. So we, we don't have an oscilloscope to show it here, but you just have to trust me that <laughs> when, when we do something like th with this, this module and then we, we crossfade to, to add an extra stage or to do some other process, it actually continues to have curves that are in line under control uh, with this control going from linear ramps all the way up to, to full on uh, deep exponential curves that that these cross faded ones also follow in the right way. Okay, so moving on to the, the second concept that I want to talk about. So uh, also a new module that we have this year is the mini horse and this is a, a 12 key positional sensitive touch plate controller and it's it's tempting to to think of this as a keyboard in the sense that you would use it to control a synth voice and you can do that you can take the master section uh, to gate out and the variable to pitch and uh, are we is this working I can't tell if it's actually on or not to sum it up no it wasn't on uh, okay so it can do that but that that's really a, a, a simple way of using a, a really complex tool because each key has a, a position, pressure, and gate output, and each key is a totally unique, separate uh, circuit on its own that doesn't interact with each other. So a concept that I thought might be interesting would be a, a kind of classic patch for for us to use is to take a harmonic oscillator or or a bark filter that have a lot of cv inputs and use the 
the position outputs from the individual keys to control that the mix of the on those instruments because the position outputs are uh, are um, they have memory so if you swipe your hand across the the keys you effectively can draw the mix and and it will stay wherever you left it uh, for as long as the power is on but the point that I want to make is that we can do that but there's nothing that because each of these keys is a completely independent circuit that if we're not using the master section then there's really nothing tying all 12 keys to controlling one device um, you could be using each key to control a totally different parameter on a totally different synth. And so an idea that I had was what if I used eight keys to control the mix of the harmonic oscillator and then used the remaining keys to control something else. Um, sorry, that's not right. Also, they don't have to all be the positions. So another idea that I had was what if what if the gate outs from the from keys on the left were selecting on the sequence selector, selecting which which channel is active, and then and then we have different delay taps going into those and then had the output of those different delay taps feeding back the VCA in the middle.
ways are short enough. You can actually pick out different uh, resonant. Maybe if I make it even more confusing, if I add an element of pressure from the master section and make that control the delay time, then... Okay, so for the <laughs> for the the third concept, um, I'd like to, to delve into this idea of uh, sequence or s sequence selector a little bit. But instead of of doing what I've just done with the mini horse selecting from it, I'd like to try using the sequence selector to do um, a little bit of um, what in the Korg wave, wave station they called wave sequencing. So the the sequence selector is this module here, and it's an analog sequencer that can do. Uh, it's only five stages long, but it can do uh, a, a CV sequence using the sliders, and as a transpose input that is mixed together with that. So quite often the way that we use it is that we take the CV out of the voltage multi-stage and then either and then plug that into the transpose input and then either clock them at different lengths but on the same clock so that we create a uh, five against eight or three against seven or whatever to create these long sequences but also this module has the ability to select which stage you're on from buttons at the bottom, triggers externally, like I just did from the mini horse, or or from voltage in uh, the analog input to, to sweep across them, or to pulse it along in the conventional way, and then has these five to one selectors. And the selectors can can select CVs or audio or gates or whatever. So what we're going to do here is rather than selecting between five different uh, CV signals, we're going to actually put audio signals through them. And in this case, we're going to put five different, to start with, it'll be four waves coming out of the complex oscillator and one noise. And then that will actually be the the primary sound source that goes into a uh, uh, amplitude and tone controller and goes out into the into the world and what it should what it should allow is is for the same the, the the master clock of the of the the voltage multi stage to to cycle through to cycle through different waves coming out of there. So what 
what's happening now is that as we step through eight stages, this might be time for another drawing. Uh, <laughs> so as we step through eight steps in the sequence, we also step through five steps in the sequence selector, which obviously five and, and eight uh, don't repeat for 40 steps. So, so we have our uh, voltage multi-stage, which is eight steps long. And this is sending out the, the pitch CV to the, um, to the complex oscillator. And then the, the clock to the uh, sequence selector. Maybe we shouldn't use that in Germany. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, so we're taking uh, four waves out of here. These are um, what are they? Square, sine, and, and then the the mix. And then we're also sending noise in there. And so as this clocks through it, it plays saw wave, square wave, sine wave, mix, noise, and, and then that cycle doesn't match up with the eight steps from that are doing the pitches. But we wouldn't have to have this... We wouldn't have, have to have it be uh, asymmetrical or, or not linking. So now the, the sequence on the sequence selector is only four steps long, so it corresponds exactly with the, the, the eight steps coming from the voltage multistage, and it cycles twice for every time that the volt, voltage multistage does one. But then the, the, the keen eyes in, in the group ask the obvious question, which is, what if what if it wasn't all coming from the same oscillator? did was was remove remove this triangle and the sine wave and go to the other side of the oscillator to the uh, triangle and saw wave from also from the same module but from the modulation oscillator not from the, the primary so now and it doesn't stop what's happening inside of the module from happening too so now the left side modulation section is FMing the primary but we're hearing the only half the time hearing the primary, half the time hearing the modulator, even though it's modulating at the same time.
Sorry. <laughs> So uh, the, the final thing that I wanted to, to include was actually to, to do some stuff with the sequence selector working against the voltage multistage. I mean, this is already doing that, but um, with g this so far is just doing the um, wave selection using these selectors, which I'll go into this a little bit more first, but then I'm going to talk about ways of using these selectors to select among triggers and select among um, feedback points or resets or whatever. But um, another thing that I totally should have gotten into before would be that you could, you could also have the, the source be You, you don't have, first of all, you don't have to have every input connected to something. In, so if there's nothing connected to a certain stage in the sequence selector, it will just sit at ground. But in this case, if we use the second one going into the FM and put on the, the primary. So now what's happening is that the the triangle and the saw wave from the the left side or the modulation side of the complex oscillator they're only plugged into to stages two and three of the sequence selector, but that output is plugged into the FM input on the the primary on the right side oscillator. So you hear that during those steps. we actually get uh, an FM sound. So now I'm patching the CVA from the voltage multistage, which is the, the top row CVs, into the transpose input. So now I'm controlling the pitch still with that, but I'm adding in a... which, without anything happening on the top row of the voltage multistage, we can really hear the the result of that. So this now, I, I've added one more into the FM bus, and this is a random, a fluctuating random. So essentially, a low, a low bandwidth noise, uh, a CV that's moving around randomly below audio rate or low audio rate. Occasionally, we hear like a, which is the that uh, noise modulating the pitch.
since since I've been creating this uh, wave sequencing thing, which which I mentioned was uh, an idea that that I took from the Korg wave station, it occurred to me that that it might be kind of interesting to see also if we could do um, more of like a vector synthesis or a taking actually blending instead of selecting waves blending between um, four different waves so I will try that now so I'm going to use the the um, scan and pan to be to be a four four way voltage controlled mixer and then that will go out. So with this, if I set the, the width to just a little bit above the bottom and I set the, the center control to controlled by the, the second CV here, then I'm able to select which state, which um, channel on this is turning on at any time. And then I can plug in a series, again, a series of, of wave shapes. For simplicity's sake, we won't even have a uh, CV controlling the pitch. We'll just be listening to the changes in wave shape. And we'll even do it from the top row, so... Interesting to. Uh, no, I can't do that. and the oscillator is controlled by the voltage multi-stage. Thank you. 
Okay, so the last thing that I want to show is the the idea of patching the voltage multistage and the sequence selector together to do to do some tricks like um, nested repeating or selecting um, sources. So, for instance, the the first the first one that I talked about a little bit before was was to was to clock the the um, sorry clock the uh, no that's not how from the from the last step of the voltage multi stage I'll I'll clock the the sequence selector and then if I plug CVA into into selector input one and CVB into selector input two, then I effectively have a sequence that goes on for twice as long, plays the, plays the top row, and then plays the bottom row. <laughs> doesn't have to be this boring. Um, the second selector can be used to to send a gate output into one of the inputs and select a spot where where it's going to reset so that if we make it so that if I select stage 5 on the selector manually, then this will loop here. So now it's playing playing the, the top row and then the bottom row, unless I grab it and, and have it loop in, in this section. this whole selecting CVA and CVB, what if all of this, <laughs> if, if the selectors are, if the selector B is always used to select where the reset point is, Several of them are initiated into So 
now, depending on which stage on the sequence selector is selected, a different one of these is selected as going to the strobe input. So depending on which which um, sta stage we're on on the sequence selector, the length of the, the sequence on the voltage multi-stage is changing. So stage one is always advancing the sequence selector to the next the next stage, and then that's selecting the length overall, which is confusing and maybe needs a picture too. And this damp rag to dry erase a board isn't really the best solution. But. So the voltage multi-stage has eight gate outputs. So when a stage on it is high, or when a stage is selected, the gate output is high. And then the sequence selector uh, is taking this one and these. And then the output of this is going into the strobe, which strobe is more or less like reset, but it resets to the beginning if the if the analog control is set all the way down. So in our case, strobe is acting like a reset, but you can also make the strobe jump to anywhere. And then this is clocking this. So as as the state sequence selector is it's it's going through um, one one cycle that's um, that's only two stages long, and then it goes through one cycle that's four stages long, and then a cycle that's five stages long, and then a cycle that's seven stages long, and and that could they don't have, right now they're they're patched in in sequential order, but it could also be mangled up, and, and instead of having just those select the the reset, there could also be uh, one chaotic one. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way to go. There could be one that's So now that is it is a random gate, so only depending on how fast this is, only some of the time will it actually initiate a reset there. And, and the probability would be controlled by how quickly the, the fluctuating random is set. trick while this is playing I'm going to um, also do something that I haven't tried before but I want to make make it so that the CV in is actually a crossfade from CVA to CVB So now if I have this control all the way to the counterclockwise position, we're hearing uh, the top row of the voltage multi-stage. And if it's all the way to the clockwise position, we're hearing the, the second row of the voltage, voltage multi-stage. And we're actually able to find some meeting point between the two. But we're also able, using the ref output, which is a falling ramp that's the length of the stage, we're now actually hearing each stage, the CV is is a is a, a is crossfading from from where the, where the row A 
uh, or sorry, ro- fading from row B to row A in a linear fashion. the last patch that I wanted to show and the promise of doing something musical with what I've done isn't going to happen here so I'm going to pull the last part
Thank you.